Goose Fraba. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, and welcome back to another Outdoor Room podcast. Uh, Joe here, Scott, and Gavin. Bringing you some more information about uh, outdoorsy stuff. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, 2020 turkey season. Going to do a recap on that, how that went, as well as what we're looking at for 2021 turkey season. Um, so with that, we'll jump right into uh, 2020 season. So Scott and Gavin, neither of you hunted turkeys last year, right? No, I did not. I had too much going on. That's how life is when I take all my vacation time for deer hunting. So um, <laughs> Priorities. Yeah, it was, I mean, I know a lot of people did really well last year. I think everybody liked the weather last year. But, yeah, I didn't get out at all. Not once. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, me neither. With work schedule being crazy, I didn't make it out in the woods. So hopefully looking to change that this year. Get a, at least a day or two. See if I make something happen. Yeah. Make something happen. Got to get out there. Um, I was able to get out last year. I bought three tags in Wisconsin. Um, so I've never done that before. That was a first for me. Also, um, I was able to do my first, I guess you could say, destination trip. Um, kind of feel out how that would work. So that was pretty cool. But um, so I bought my my first tag was I I got in the drawing it was the second week, or season B. We got. Was it six different seasons? Seasons A through F in yep. Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, so that was mid to late April, if I remember correctly. Um, I probably should have looked this up before <laughs> talking about it. But um, So that was my first season. I, it was pretty cold and damp still at that time. But um, I, um, I, it was the first day, or it was opening day of that season, I remember. Um I hunted, well, actually, Nas and I talked about the kids out um, listening for gobbles and stuff the night before. So we tried, like, five different spots, and finally in the last spot we found something gobbling on some public land, which is all I hunt is public land for turkeys right now. Um, but we heard one gobbling. It was actually pretty awesome. I've never done a morning hunt before, so listening to the gobbles, knowing exactly where the turkeys were at, trying to roost them, so to say. Um it was pretty cool to be able to do that and get that to actually work. <laughs> um, but anyways, the next morning I went in there, uh, slipped in. It was kind of on a field edge, and they were maybe 50 yards into the wood line, uh, just roosted up in an oak tree. It sounded like they were like right above my head, and they were gobbling hard like the entire morning. It was pretty awesome. I actually have a video of it um, on the YouTube channel if anybody's interested, but... Um, yeah, they were gobbling hard on the limb. I was trying to call a little softly to them. Um, honestly, I'd, my calling <laughs> experience is still needs improvement. But, uh, but yeah, these, they had ended up flying down to the field. Uh, I had Jake Decoy out there. That, uh, they, they flew down at different times. One flew down first. They saw my decoy. I started putting. Didn't like something that was going on. And... I, I took a shot at it, and it was probably 70 yards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I did not judge distance very well uh, at that time. It's but. hard with them, though, because you could have, like, a. I mean, to me, like, a turkey looks like a turkey. But, like, there's really, really big turkeys, and then there's really, really small turkeys, and it just messes with... I mean, I've done that, too, where it's just like, I think this is it. I think we're close enough, and I can't move fast enough to get a range, or, range finder up, and yeah, I don't even not see one. me, so... yeah. yeah. But they've also been my bugaboo for like ever where I just can't <laughs> do it. So I don't know. I've never shot a Tom and I don't know why not. So it's been in front of me. Just can't commit or can't get it done or something stupid happens. So yeah, and these things happen. I don't even own a range finder yet. So that was just kind of, those are helpful. They are helpful. Especially I need to get bow one. season. Yeah. Yeah. You, know. you can't rely on limbs every time. Right. <laughs> Cause even in being in a tree stand, I mean, that changes the angle of your shot yeah. and the distance. So. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And I know they got the fancy little technology in them that tell you if you're in, at yep. an angle, what. Yep. And up by like where I hunt. So like we like Western Wisconsin right there in the middle. I mean, it's like 
this sometimes. And so like when it's like this, it's super steep. You got like a 20 yard shot and it's like 15. You're going to shoot at 15 and you're like, "What?" <laughs> okay. And then you go out to 30 and it's like 20, 20 yards. I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. Yeah. Angles yeah. are weird too. Yeah, they are. So, yeah. You do it does weird stuff when you're like that. But yeah. So like even for me, if I wouldn't have even had time to pull up a rangefinder on that bird, like, and it was a field, so there's absolutely nothing to range off of, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no bushes or trees or anything that I can gauge the distance. You know, I got my decoy out at twenty five or thirty yards or whatever, and that's about it. Um, I probably got a little jumpy, but once I saw he wasn't sticking around, I was like, ah, you're not getting away without a shot. Yeah. <laughs> so he took off flying, um, and I may have shot again while he was in the air. That's something I'm not super proud of either, but that's yeah, one of those maybe. things I just got to get the lead flying. Yeah. Right. Oh, if you ask me, turkeys have no business flying. They're way too big of a bird to be flying through the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, they're pretty, it's like it's a like long a, hop. AC yeah, it looks like. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, and I'd never recommend shooting at a bird in the air. I'd, I'll never do that again. That was stupid. Especially when he was that, that far out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a learning experience for me. And I was just thinking afterwards, what if I'd hit this thing and he's just bleeding out somewhere? I don't even know if I hit him. Yeah. I didn't see feathers or anything like that. Yeah. Like poofing, you know, like they do when mm-hmm. you shoot a bird. But right. no, that was just, it was stupid. Yeah. You learn. I mean, yeah. that's just one the whole of point things. of it too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But so, um, but that was my morning, opening morning, which actually was a pretty good morning. I was pretty excited that it worked out the way it did, um, other than missing and doing some dumb things. But <laughs> um, actually, another thing that's interesting, and I didn't realize this until afterwards, that turkey after, so that time hit the ground and I shot at it, it flew off. There was another time, and I knew there was another time in the area. And I ended up, there were some hens that I saw, and I ended up seeing another Tom. I don't think it was the same one. I, I would assume it wasn't because that Tom, he freaked out and he was gone. Um, he wasn't coming back, I was pretty sure. But there was that, <clears throat> there was a second one and he was in the field in front of me. I don't I don't remember ever seeing him fly down. It, I must have been distracted or something with the first one. But So the second one was out there. He's probably at 100 yards. I could see him. Um, and he's moving towards me. I was calling a little bit and stuff. I was trying to do a Jake call, which <laughs> I'm not the greatest caller. I'll be honest. It needs improvement. But uh, he was working my direction, which was, I was getting a little excited. Like, I might get a second shot here. Mm-hmm. Um, but as he's working towards me, like he's got the red head and everything. He's he's gobbling. He's active. He's almost committing. Not quite, though. Um, and then he starts moving quicker towards me. Like, he's running almost um and he works off to my right with a hen and after missing it i was kind of gun shy i guess you could say at that point like i didn't want to miss again (laughs) especially really not knowing if i'd even hit the first one at all and Mm -hmm. it was just kind of messed up but so he walked by into the woods behind me and uh at that point i figured it was time to end that hunt I could hear, he was actually gobbling in the woods behind me. He was still fairly hot, but I was like, yeah, he's not going to leave that hen now. So I um, figured it was probably time to move on to another spot for a while. Maybe come back later. I think that's like the weirdest thing about turkeys for me too, is like they can be like freaking out and I could, you can call and they'll answer and they'll be like crazy. And up at my place, like they'll sit in like different draws, like along the ridges and I remember standing up one time and I'm literally calling from the top, from the apple orchard, which is right, right on top between the two. And I got them both just going nuts over each other too. Like that each other are there, but they're both end up. So they just never moved. And that just always just boggles my mind that they can, I mean, I know they're trying to just get the hen to come to them, but yeah, it's just, it gets so irritating. I think that's why I don't like, like, I like turkey hunting, but I don't like turkey hunting as much as I should. And that's probably why, because it's just. That right there, like what you're saying, is just like the part that just gets me riled up. <laughs> and like, it's yeah, there's nothing. To, you can, oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, there's nothing you can do. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. They're mm-hmm. right. They're turkeys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're kind of goofy sometimes. Yeah, it's hard to compete with an, a real bird too. I mean, yeah. a real hen. You know, they're right. The, it's got the visuals. It's moving it's got the around. Red sounds, and, you know. Yeah. And you just sitting there stationary trying to call. You know. And even like the old time vets that I know that turkey hunt, they're like always oh, with the top or he's with the hen. You're not getting that one. Find a different one. You know, it's like, well, 
All right, I guess. Yeah. There, there's the option of calling the hen in. Yeah. And that's just another strategy, trying to, like, try and cut in and getting aggressive with your calling. But then all that can go one way or the other. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're either going to come to you or they're not. Yeah. It's almost 50 50. And it kind of depends on your ability to call sometimes and just knowing what to do at what time. And you got to read their temperature, so to say. I think the funniest times are like when you're, you got, like, I had a Tom one time down the bowl. And it's just a little valley in the bottom there. It's got a creek running through it. And I remember I was calling, and I had a tom up top. And out of nowhere, this little Jake just comes screaming down the hill right to me, stops, looks around, doesn't see anything. I didn't have a decoy out. Takes off running, just kept running right past me. I, I, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and I, I, I'm looking back now, I'm like, I wish I would have shot him because I ended up not getting one that year. But it was just like, they'll they'll come to anything, Like it seems like. I mean, I've never had a Jake not come in. I don't know if you have you ever had it like them hang up. I've never seen one of those before. You've never seen a Jake? No. No. Oh. Well, but they're curious because they're yeah. they're young and they don't yeah. unexperienced yeah. and they're looking for girls. Like like guys will be calling in toms and they'll have so many Jakes in front of them that it'll keep the toms away. Like the toms won't want to come in at all. Mm-hmm. So, oh, uh, yeah, that'll happen because Jakes tend to gang up sometimes Mm -hmm. if there's like three or four of them ganging up on one time then he's not gonna want anything to do with it (laughs) actually i guess i can talk about this a little bit this is part of last year's season two um when we went out to the western side of the state um nast and i went on a like a road trip so to say a three-day trip um we slept in the truck just kind of parked in a field somewhere i don't know if you can do that or not but we did it (laughs) um we just slept in the back of the truck it was like 30 degrees each night it was freezing uh, but it was a big note for me. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Uh, we, well, you have all your camp and stuff, though. Yeah, well, we had a mattress. I got a like a full size bed in my truck, so I was able to fit a queen size mattress back there. Reminds me of an Alan Jackson song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. No, it it was fun. It was a little cold, but it was it was my first time doing something like that on on public land, and I've always wanted to try this, and it, we were able to make it work. Um, but as far as the Jake thing goes, that was the first morning we heard a Tom, or what we thought was a Tom. <laughs> Actually, thinking back, it was probably these Jakes uh, that were gobbling that evening. Uh, we went out trying to roost some birds that night. Uh, we got there in the afternoon, and so we're driving from spot to spot. And finally, we hear some gobbling um, like across the road uh, on some private land, but it was right next to public land. So, And those were the only birds that we heard the entire night so i'm just like okay we're i guess we'll go set up on the public land and see if we can call them in uh, and see if that would work because i don't want to hunt somewhere that i don't know where there's birds because i know they're here and we've got a chance of calling them in at least uh so we went out the next morning set up it was kind of like a the private land was like a field and next to it was like a big draw with some timber in it like hardwoods um and they were in the just kind of in the, um, just into the hardwoods. Um, like they would, my guess was they were pitching off of the edge of the draw into a tree um, and just roosting right there next to the field. Um, so we sat there for a little while, uh, didn't hear or see anything really. They were gobbling that morning, but then they shut up after a while. Um, so we sat for a little bit, tried calling. Eventually, I got impatient and went up and just to see what was in the field, and I could see a hen out there. And then I looked to my left, and there's some movement going on. There's two, what, um, you know how the toms and jakes or whatever are darker colored and feathers. So I saw the two darker birds. I'm like, oh, there's a couple toms over here. Like, we need to go get set up again. And then I saw that they were jakes, and I was like, ah, I don't want to shoot a jake. <laughs> And you can shoot a I'd jake. Been like, how do I go get that thing right now? Because <laughs> right. it's been like six years since I shot a turkey. So same yeah. here. Yeah, now, I have a question. So how do you how do you decide how long you're going to stay? Because that was always my issue too. Like starting out, like I didn't have a ton of guidance. Like I had people tell me what to do, but I only went out with somebody one time. That's the one time I shot a jake. So, but I mean, like how how do you tell when it's time to call quits and when to start? So that's it's hard to teach. I would say this is something that you have to be out in the woods and getting experience. Um, and I will tell you every single oh, you time. you have all the answers? No, I'm sorry. There's no magic. I'm going home now. No magic formula here. 
Um, and I'll tell you every time, deer hunting, turkey hunting, it doesn't matter what you're doing, fishing, you need to get out there and get your own experience. You can read books, you can read articles, you can listen to podcasts, you can watch videos. There's nothing like getting out in the woods and getting experience for yourself. Right. Is there any, would you say there's any indicators that would tell you, like, I mean, so, shooting your gun and missing a turkey, is that an indicator or is that something you, you stay after for? Because it well, sounds like you, on that first story, stayed after and maybe could have, if you would have came back, it may have paid off a little bit, but... It that, depends on the situation. Yeah. I think it also depends on how many birds are actually in the area, how many yeah. different birds, you know? Yep, that's true. Um, it depends on how active they are or seem to be. Uh, for me, okay, there's some people do what you call deer hunting turkeys, and you just sit there and wait for them all day. I cannot do that. I don't have the patience for that. I have a limited season. Like in Wisconsin, your seasons are only a week long, and usually I've only got three days or so that I have available to hunt during that week. So I'm going to go after hot birds that are gobbling and I'm not going to sit probably more than two or three hours. That's just me and the experience that I've had so far. And that might change in the future, um, depending on how my experience goes. But in this situation, we sat for, I think three hours and nothing was going on. The birds weren't gobbling anymore. I figured they might have worked off further onto the private land. And if that's the case, why am I sitting here waiting for him? Yeah. You want to capitalize on your time. So you want to move. Right. That makes sense. I know, like, I know this is a turkey hunting podcast, but I don't have a ton of experience in this section. But I know with, like, deer hunting, too, there's guys that say, you know, it's always best to sit all day. If you can sit all day, then just sit all day for deer hunting because you don't know what time everything is. But it's just, I feel like, do turkeys have, like, what deer have where they have these active periods and these slow down periods, you know, cause like early season they're active in the morning because like deer are active because they're hungry. They're already out from the night before and they want to get as much food in before it gets hot and they can go cool down for the most part. Do so turkeys have that same like kind of concept. They have a similar concept, but they're not as uh, patternable as deer mm-hmm. are because deer will do the same thing. Yeah. Like every day, depending on the time of year, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and turkeys, they are sort of patternable, but especially on public land, it's hard because they're being messed with Push all the time and they change their behavior. Um, and they so, never take the same way twice, is what I've always seen, too, it seems like. They'll take, like, so my very first year turkey hunting, or no, it wasn't my first year. It was my third year, I think. Anyways, I was trying to pattern this flock that I found early season in March. I went out there a couple times, and they were taking the same route, but it was never, they weren't, they're not taking a trail. Yeah. They are like, walking through a field, and they'd take sort of the same route, but it was really, you know, it was a... Shifty. Yeah. It's, like, a large range of, they could be 10 yards from a certain spot or 40, 50 yards from that spot or something right. like that. Right. It was, yeah, like, a really wide path, you could yeah. say. But they'd always do the same thing. Well, they kind of walk that way. I think it's something they do for, like, predators, like the way they stagger, disperse. Yeah. yeah, like they're just staggered. So if one gets got, they can all. Yeah, so. and when you got that many eyes looking out, it they're. Well, that's the crazy thing is I think they're like the dumbest bird ever, <laughs> but then they like they can see worms that are underneath leaves, and if you move like this, then you're they're taking off and running away from you. Yeah. So. Yeah, you. But can. you can hit them with a car, which doesn't make any sense, you know. <laughs> so. Right. Uh. I remember where we were going with this. I'm sorry. I totally derailed that. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but. Um, so I guess I'll just reverse back to my opening day there again. So I shot at that bird in the morning. I had that other one walk past me. So as I'm walking out, uh, so I mentioned this, this turkey like changed its behavior all of a sudden and started walking quick back towards the woods. So as I was walking out towards the truck, because I was decided I was going to be done at that spot for the moment, um, I passed another hunter who was not there when I got there. So I'll, I kind of put two and two together afterwards. And actually after I created the video, I was thinking about this and I was like, you know what? That's probably why that Turkey did what he did. Cause this hunter came out late, set up Turkey saw him and started running off. Cause he was Turkey. had wanted nothing to do with my decoy or anything. He saw it, but he's just like, Nope, I'm out of here. Um, so I believe that's probably what happened was that the hunter came in late and scared him off. But you know, that's part of work. <laughs> that's part of hunting public land. These things happen and you just got to, you really have to have multiple different places to hunt and scout um, and know where different birds are at because you can't put all your eggs in one basket <laughs> with one piece of property. 
or you're, you're just you're losing out on opportunities. Um, so I'll, I went out that afternoon slash evening uh, to a different spot, um, and I've never hunted this spot before. It's a spot that I scouted a year or two prior. Um, in the springtime and I saw like way in the back, there's like a pasture type field, public land. And I saw three or four toms back there. Uh, and there's feathers all over the place. It was obvious. This is an area where turkeys spend a lot of their time during the day. So I, I was like, well, I guess I'll try that. Cause I don't really know where else to go right now. Uh, so I went back there it was kind of raining that day. It was actually, it was raining a lot that day. It was pretty miserable. I sat through a thunderstorm. <laughs> uh, that's also a first for me. But I figured, you know, it doesn't matter if it's raining. The turkey's going to be out there anyways. They, it's not like they got a house to go to. Um, so I, I went out there, set up where I thought turkeys might walk by, kind of in the transition of the hardwoods and the pasture. Um, I got my Jake decoy out there. And I had a deer walk by. I just kind of checked out my decoy. That was kind of cool. Um, and I tried some light calling because, uh, <coughs> up until this point, like I'll, the only thing I know is like you call for turkeys and they come to you, <laughs> which isn't the case. Calling is only a very small part of turkey hunting. That, and I've realized this over the course of years that I've hunted, um, which I, I'm by no means an expert here. I would consider myself a novice still, <laughs> um, experienced novice, but a novice nonetheless. Um, so I tried some light calling. I was like, oh, I'm going to try something different here. It's, it's raining. I don't think birds are going to be super active. I can't hear anything gobbling. There's, I can't even hear hens. So I'm going to try something light. So I tried just some clucking and purring on my um, pot call. And I see a hen off to my left start walking towards my decoy. So I'm like, oh, this is good. <laughs> there's a turkey here. This is a start. Um, and I figured um, if there's a hen, there's probably got to be a tom nearby. Well, yeah, I, you can hope, I guess. Um, so I had another hen walk by. Actually, I lied. I did see a jig. Um, I actually thought yeah, about shooting I him, I remember too. that in that video. There was a jig in there. Yeah, I do have a video of this. Um, I forgot about that. There was a jig that yeah. walked by. It was tempting because he was in range. And he was looking at my decoy like, ah, I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> so he kind of shied away from it and followed those hens off. Um, and then I, I tried some... Um, just super light, uh, not clucking, but uh, yelping uh, at my pot call. Um, and then I see this Tom walking in, and he's, like, posturing up to my decoy. You know, like they put their heads up in the air. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that means, 100%. I'm going to have to figure that out and explain to you guys. Uh, it, it means – it's, like, an aggressive type stance. But he was like beelining it for my decoy. Like, I'm going to destroy you right now. <laughs> I didn't let him touch it. And like, you're not touching my decoy. I paid a hundred bucks for that thing. Yeah. Uh, so I blasted him before he even reached my decoy. But that was my my second bird that I've ever shot. And uh, everything just kind of came together. It's raining. It's miserable outside. It's still a pretty early season. It's only the second week of the season. But uh, everything worked out. And it was... Pretty satisfying, honestly, on opening day for me. So, I've never had it go smooth like that. <laughs> me neither. Yeah. My la the actually, the season that I shot my Jake, it was like ungodly hot. Like, just, it was, I mean, we were in t shirts and shorts, and we, even that was too much. Like, because we're in this, we were in a blind. It was awful. That sounded way more fun. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll have to get you on some turkey, Scott. Hey. I don't know. I don't know if I, this year too, this upcoming year, I think it's slim pickings for me just because yeah. with, with the kiddo and having a short season and the way, you know, at work, me and Gavin are on the same days, but me and Joe is different than us. So me and Gavin have like three days for, well, at least for my season, I have three days for that. Yep. So out of the seven day season, which Joe's got it done in three. So we'll, we'll see. But I think one of those days isn't even the actual that weekend isn't actually no, part of season I, either. I think we only actually have two days to, to hunt to hunt our days off. Oh yeah. Cause it's like we Wednesday before work, but yeah. Cause they're Wednesdays like Tuesday, through Wednesday, Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah. It's the seasons. Yeah. It's right on the front side. I hate that. 
the only bad thing about a rotating schedule. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you just got to work with it. Did you get on that second season when you guys were in the trucks? Did you get one that weekend? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. you did. Yep. So this was actually my, this is my favorite turkey hunt ever. Um, next to my very first time I shot a turkey. Um, so I was with Nast, who's my wife, by the way. Um, I'm trying to think of how this exactly went. So yeah, we, we saw those Jake's that one morning. So I guess I did lie. I've seen Jake's in the field. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I never really thought of it. I've never shot at one. I mean, I, I would, I don't, if it, if it was like the last season, I'd absolutely shoot a Jake cause you can do that in Wisconsin. And I'm not going to tell you that's dumb because yep. it's any, not <laughs> any male or bearded bird. Yep. You can shoot a bearded hen. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that someday. We'll see. Well, have you seen one of them? On my trail camera, I got one. Oh. I'll put a picture of it. I thought you were going to say I no. Have, I have actually seen <laughs> like, a couple sure? of them. They're pretty rare. Yep. Um, they didn't have very big beards. Probably like an inch or two at most. Yeah. Um, this one had like a six inch beard. I thought it was a Tom. And I was like. Head coloring is completely wrong, and it doesn't have spurs, so <laughs> hen. But uh, anyway, so yeah, so that morning, <laughs> so that morning we saw those jakes. Uh, that afternoon, we could just kind of scout it around, trying to learn the area and stuff. Um, I want to say it was the second day because I think we only hunted two days. Um. So we went out that morning. We found a bunch of scratching while we were scouting in this one area, um, which is actually the area where we heard the birds across the street um, the prior evening. But um, so we, I figured, you know, we can't hear anything else. We haven't really found a sign anywhere else. So we'll just go into this area where there's, there's scratching all over the place. And there's feathers laying on the ground. So this is probably a good spot to hang out. Maybe we'll try the deer hunting style of turkeys and just wait and see what happens. So we walk in there. There's like a trail that leads through the woods back to a field. Um, and right on the, kind of by the field edge, you can see a, we saw a hen walking around. And, you know, like before, if there's a hen there, there's probably a town nearby. This is an area where turkeys live. Um, we also spooked off a bunch of deer. That seems to be a thing too. Like mm -hmm. where there's deer, there's turkeys. And where there's turkeys, there's deer. I really, I think they use each other. You know, as like, Okay, you sit on, especially up there, you sit on this side of the ridge, I'm going to sit on this side of the ridge, <laughs> and if you jump up, I'm jumping up, yeah. or the opposite. Yeah. Usually when I'm hunting, the way it goes, turkey season, I see all kinds of deer and hardly any turkeys. Then come deer season, <laughs> bunch of turkeys and no deer. Yeah, yeah. yep, that's true. <laughs> it's ridiculous. In the fall, you guys go out first. In the spring, we'll go out first. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But yeah, the deer have that amazing sense of smell, and then the turkeys have the amazing eyesight, and between the two of them, it's you can't win. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, so yeah, anyways, we saw that hen when we walked in, spooked off a bunch of deer. And I was just like, well, uh, maybe there's a tom following her. Let's try to swing around the field maybe a little bit. So we set up kind of in the wood line, but sort of near the field where, but it was in the wood line in the leaves and stuff where they'd been scratching a whole bunch. Um, and then we heard some gobbling going off. It was like way in the distance. So I got on my phone. I was trying to figure out exactly where that gobbling was coming from. Uh, I thought it was on some private land, but there's public land over there. Uh, but there's also this big river um, between us and the Tom. <laughs> and it was too big to cross. So I was like, okay, let's go get in the truck and we'll head over to that other piece of public. Uh, so we went over there. It's like this big, I don't know if it was, it must have been a hay field of some sort because it was still short. Um, and the turkeys are absolutely going to be in that short field area uh, where they can strut and you know do their thing um so i ended up seeing a tom out there spooked him because i was walking over the middle of the field which was completely idiotic <laughs> like that you just don't do that when you're hunting like, you guys probably even know that as deer hunters they, you don't uh, walk over an open field yes I, especially if you're trying to be quiet yeah and not seen but there's also times where i've like if i have a high-powered rifle I will peek up over the field because, yes. you know, yeah. but yeah, that was different, just, different concepts. I mean, if you're bow hunting or something like that, that's oh, no, probably yeah. not something you're going to no, do no. right along the edge. Sometimes yeah. just inside the woods if I have yeah. to. Yeah. So. yeah. Just trying to avoid possibly being seen by something that might yeah. be out there. Well, the biggest thing isn't so much like hearing, especially in short grass fields like that. It's just blending in. I mean, you're wearing camel. So the closer you are to the trees, the better it's going to look. 
You know, mm-hmm. they may be like, "What is that?" As you're moving, but if you stop, then they lose you. That's the whole point of the camo, right? Yeah. yeah. So, well, that might be true for deer, but if the turkey's easy, he's yeah, gone. He's he's go- yeah. gone. They don't wait around. No. 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 But uh, yeah, the field was big, and I was feeling lazy, and I wanted to get over there, but <laughs> that's why I did that. That was dumb. That's all part of the experience thing, you know. Yep. Like just learning as you go. Um, it seems like the best lessons come when you get burned. Like, it's, you don't forget yeah, us. It's you know? true. Yep. So I there's never, things I never do anymore because I got burned once on it, you know. <laughs> I'll never forget that morning I missed. That was a terrible feeling. Yeah. But experience. Chalk it up to experience. Um, so, yeah, we spooked that time. He ran off into, there's like a strip of woods that was kind of like a ravine type thing that kind of came up the middle of the field. Um, and then we were right, right towards the tip of that ravine. And we could hear a hen like cutting and yelping down in the ravine. Uh, so at that point, I was just like, it's getting hot. I need to go take my winter coat off, first of all. <laughs> Wait, that was the week it was like 30-something, and then it got all the way up to like 65 or something Yeah, like during that. the day. Yeah. Like, it was ridiculous. Because I remember I texted you, I think, or something. Or I, I got a hold of you somehow, and you're like, it's really cold, and then it's really hot, and I don't know <laughs> what's going on. And yeah. I'm like, yep, sounds about right, so... Yeah. Especially that area this time of year. Yep. I think it's because of the water from the Mississippi. Hmm. Right? Because weren't you over by there? It was kind of close to there, sort of. Well, either way, I think those two different, like, they just push, and then the valleys don't help either, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the temperature differences during the mornings and the mm. afternoons. Was and Wisconsin's just wild Wisconsin in general, weather. so. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so I went and took my coat off because I figured at that point I'm not going in there when there's a hen going crazy right now uh, maybe i could call her out into the field but that time's going to be with that hen that hen's and when they're yelping like that they're looking for a time they're getting all excited you know um, so i figured it was probably 10 ish i think ten thirty, maybe even 11 so it's still early morning uh so i figured i'd let them go do their thing i'll come back in like an hour or two and Maybe the hen will work off by that point. The times will be lonely and looking for another hen. These guys were fired up. They were gobbling. And they were, there were two of them we could hear. Um, Because there's still one. They weren't together, but um, there was one in, I think it was in the backfield. You could hear them both gobbling. Um, So anyway, we went downgraded a little bit. um, Be a little more comfortable. Went and sat it in a field next to well, kind of on the opposite side of the ravine, I was going to try to call them out of there. Uh, it was starting to get really windy, um, windy days traditionally. If you, if you talk to an experienced turkey hunter, they'll tell you windy days are hard to hunt. Uh, it's hard to hear stuff. Turkeys get a little spooky, it seems like. And yeah, it was just super windy. It was actually starting to get a little cold because of the wind. Because <laughs> we were sitting out in this open field and the wind's just like ripping through there. And we weren't seeing anything. Nothing's coming up there. I don't even know if they could hear me calling. Because mm-hmm. um, I knew they were down in that ravine. Yeah, nothing carries real well Yeah, on windy days. So Yeah. So after maybe an hour or two, I was like, this is not working. Um, and if they wanted to come over here, they'd be over here by now. So I we, pack, we packed up. And my, my goal at that point, because I knew that hen was towards the, the tip of the ravine. Um, so I kind of walked in the other side of it, if that makes sense. Um, and I was planning on walking up the ravine, uh, in the wooded area to try to get eyes on them, see if they were even in there anymore, or if they might be in the field on the other side of it. Uh, so we ducked down into there and started working our way up the ravine towards where we heard that hen. And I saw that Tom go in there and I saw some movement ahead and it looked like a hen. It was definitely a turkey of some sort. I couldn't tell if it was a tom or not, but I was like, well, there's a turkey up there. So we backed up a little bit. Didn't it didn't see us, which was pretty amazing, actually. It was probably a good seventy or hundred yards off though. Um so we backed up, put up the decoy down in the bottom of the ravine, and we moved up the hill about thirty yards. Um to where if the turkey popped out right next to the decoy, it only had like 10 yards between the hill where I wouldn't be able to see it in the decoy. So I had a, uh, we were, we were covered pretty good there. Mm-hmm. Um, sitting right next to like a fallen tree and, um, 
tried some super light calling. I think we were only there for like 30 minutes. I tried some light calling. I didn't do anything super loud or aggressive. And I hear something rustling in the leaves. I look over across the other side of the ravine and there's a Tom walking down the hill. But his head wasn't like bright colored or anything. It was like a fall turkey look, like super dull. Um, so I thought he might have heard my calling, maybe. <laughs> it's hard to say really, but I, I saw him walking down. I'm like, he doesn't look super excited. So I'm going to try some light calling, see what that does. Maybe if he sees my decoy, it'll get aggressive or something like that. Um, and I was, using, it was in my, the same Jake decoy that I always use. Um, so I tried some light yelping at that point, And then I see his little white head and start bobbing in front of me towards my decoy. And I was like, yes, it's working. <laughs> and then uh, I asked Nas if she was on him. She's like, yeah. And I, I shoot in the thing. Um, he flaps down into there's just like a creek down there. He just like flaps down to the creek, and, and then Nas is like, "I forgot to hit the record button." <laughs> so that's the one where we don't have the kill on the camera. Um, it was actually kind of funny. I didn't. I don't care if we got it on camera or not. It was still fun, and then just the fact that we were able to make it work, and she was there with me, it was just it's my favorite hunt so far. So mm -hmm. yeah, the experience of you know hunting the animal and make you know making that shot count. Mm -hmm. is the main part you know getting everything on camera is a bonus it is you're absolutely right about that i'm just i'm surprised that she'd want to lay in a 30 degree truck with you and then <laughs> go get hit in the face by wind on a field when you shed it all your layers because you thought it was going to be way too warm and yeah she that's what makes me lot. laugh is that at least I'm, I'm just happy that when you told me that, I'm like, I'm just happy that she watched you do something, you know, for being out there like that. I mean, those are like the hard days, honestly, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, there's really nice days. Where you're like, Oh, I'll take, I'll take the girlfriend out or something. It's really nice. out. and then there's days like that where you're like, this is a real test if they're going to want to stay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It worked out. And I asked her, do you want to just stay in the truck and sleep? She's like, Nope, I'm going with you. I'm glad she did. It, it worked out really good. Uh, so I was able to fade, I was able to fill two tags last year, which was my best turkey season ever. So what about uh, let's what about next year? Uh, yes. So uh, what are your guys' plans for hunting? We'll start with you guys. Um. Well, uh, like I said, I got. I think it's season first season. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got first season. Uh. Nat, my girlfriend, she also is going to try getting a turkey this year. And I'm hoping she has better luck than me. <laughs> um, so she also got first season. So that's why we're kind of on the fence. I have uh, I have a roommate. His name is Caleb. He is really big into turkey hunting, like nonstop right now. That's all he's talked about or thought about. Um, he's talking about taking her out as well. He doesn't have first season. So I'm hoping she can go with him and I can try to scoot away. <laughs> Um, but that's kiddo permit permitting and, um, getting everything lined up on that end, which is a new feat for me. So, um, yeah, that's all I got planned. I didn't buy an extra tag. I'm just going to try to make the best of what I have right now, just because I don't think I have as much time again this year. Like I said, I burn all my vacation time in November and in October. So, yeah. um, that's that. <laughs> It's not a joke either. <laughs> no, no, nope. Everything they give me goes right there. So yep. I have no vacations through almost the entire year. Maybe a holiday here and there I'll take, but yeah. So that's my plan. I'm just there to clean, clean and cook. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I have second season and like I said before, I only got a couple days to hunt. So I'm going to try to get out there. Um, hopefully I can get on some birds. I uh, don't know. It's because I didn't hunt last year and I barely hunted the year before. So I have, no idea what's on the property I hunt for birds. Um, based on what I've seen in the fall, we got a bunch of them. But, you know, it, between fall and spring, a lot changes. So yeah. just have to get out there and see. Hopefully I can do a little scouting here coming up. Just try to get an idea where they're hanging out and where they're feeding. But mm -hmm. And that's on that public piece that, or not public, uh, that private piece that you hunt. Right. Yep. That closed Yep, I'm, um, I hunt over in Zone One um, for turkeys. So, okay. Do you know? But, does anybody else that hunts that property hunt turkeys there? There's actually only two of us that hunt turkeys on that piece of property. Um, 
it's about 275 acres. So turkey season, there's hardly any pressure. But come deer season, we have four guys that bow hunt and then like eight guys, eight or ten guys that gun hunt it. So it's almost as bad as public come gun season. Yeah. So. Yikes. Well, that's not bad for turkey, though. That's... Yeah. And I wish I could do that. <laughs> something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. The, the way the property is set up, though, it does kind of make it hard. You know, mm-hmm. most of the birds hang out in one or two areas. Um, mm-hmm. It's an old farm. So there's a couple egg fields that still are operational. There's an old pasture woods, a uh, pasture that was turned into a woods. Um, and then some of the egg fields are now pine groves. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just the different types of terrain and features of it make it easy for birds to hide out in and yeah you know, that's probably why they point how tall are those pines um they are close to 35 feet now oh wow okay mm-hmm. are they like low hangers too yes they are okay so they can They're, dip under there like yep mm-hmm. it's they were planted like 20 25 years ago wow so mm-hmm. yeah, nice. they're, they're just getting to the point where the the bottom rungs are starting to die off so you can kind see, of start to you see, can see about three four rows into them now so, which when they get a little bigger, it'll be great for deer hunting because you'll be able to actually see something because <laughs> some of the stands that we have um, are set up like right in the middle of the pines or near them. And you don't, you know, you don't see the deer until they're right on top of you. Same mm-hmm. thing with turkeys if you hunt in that area. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's probably why you have turkeys there though. The diversity you're talking about. Yep. You got hardwoods, you got pines, be, you got. I mean, I don't know, dude. I mean, that, those could be good roosting trees too, I think. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, we, Especially the ones on the edge. I don't know. I don't really know. We for do sure. have a lot of big mature oaks um, and a couple bluffs near the area and a river. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What I've noticed is the turkeys love to sit up on those bluffs in the oaks, and that's where they usually roost. Mm. So I have seen on public land turkeys roosting in pines, though. Like the type of pines you're talking about. Yep. Like the younger ones, they'll just fly up there and find a limb that they can fit on and. Hopefully it supports their weight. They're so weird. Yeah, that they are. I I had no idea what it was. I heard flapping around going up there, and I was like, "That's a turkey." Isn't it? Yeah, and I was deer hunting at the time, but it was just odd. Yeah. But hmm. all right. Well, uh, I guess I'll talk about what I've got planned then. I have one more question. Yeah. When is the last? So the zones for one and two are done as of today. And what zone are they on now? Or, okay, so. You're talking about yeah, like um, excess tags. Yeah. Um, so just if anybody's, you, well, I don't know when we're gonna release this, but if somebody is listening, like, how does it? How do do you know the order? Because I don't even yeah. know the order. So that's, that's why so like, like I didn't get anything. Because one, I like I said, I got too much going on, and I my main goal is for Nat to get one, and if I end up having to take her out and or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But the other thing too is like I don't even know when when I was supposed to buy them. Well, like I get one every year, but I, I hardly go mm-hmm. just get it in my license. And so Monday zone one went on sale for all the excess tags that were left. Most of <clears throat> mostly it's for fourth, fifth and sixth seasons. Yeah. Today's the 17th, by the way, it's Wednesday. So it's Wednesday. So it'd be zone three. So that, that the first week that they go on sale, it's zone one on one day. The next day is zone two, zone three, zone four. All the way down. All yep. the way down. So huh. yeah, they, they all go on sale. And then after this week, um, starting next week, they'll be over the counter tags. So you have to wait in line for your tag now, whether it be online or in store. Um, And there's only a limited number. If those tags don't sell out during this week, then you can buy them. Then you can buy them anytime. Maybe I'll get a fifth season or a sixth season or something. Well, when I looked last night, uh, I believe zone one had, I think a thousand tags left for the fifth season. And like 10,000 left for the sixth sixth season. season. So there's Mm. plenty of options. Well, we'll have to see what happens next Uh, week. (laughs) Whatever's left. (laughs) Yeah. I already have to look at the dates and maybe, maybe it's better. I just go buy an extra tag. Yeah. For that later season. Yeah. So Um, we're low pressure around me too. So I think we, we have a, a, a son and his dad come out. And they always hunt the same section every time. And that's just what they, I've offered. What they've, we've always gotten the same season. And I've always offered to switch because I always usually hunt the back mm-hmm. stuff behind the house, which is like the larger check, like section. They always want to hunt the 40 acres that are right behind, right behind the barn. So right off the road, pretty much. And they've actually, 
got more turkeys than I have, so I get why they're staying. But they've o- I've always offered to switch and give them you know more opportunity, and um, they always like to do that. But we've always gotten the same season. So to them, and then I have a uncle from Iowa that occasionally comes up, and he'll if he's visiting. He owns a chunk of property right next to the house. Him and my aunt do, and he'll come up and check on that and shed hunt or whatever, and then go turkey hunt when the season starts. So um, those are the only two people that are on my my chunk. So it might be worth me getting a fifth season too. There's not a lot of pressure as long as they're not all hend up and. I don't know. Oh, late season, the hens are going to nest, like yeah. the, mm-hmm. towards the well, towards the middle of the day. I guess it. I guess it depends on where you're at. But mm-hmm. um, so late season's not that bad to hunt. But you'll know. I it. know it's <laughs> gonna be another I've wild goose hunted. chase. I think so. I'm gonna need what I do need is help. I probably need to have like Joe or somebody tag along so I don't look like an idiot again. Because <laughs> I end up just running all over the land chasing turkeys down because. I don't like to sit either. I'm really impatient. So spot and stalk. Yeah, that's literally yeah. what I've been doing, and I get so close, so close. <laughs> and something derails it, but yeah. yeah, you'll make it work one of these days. All right, now that I've taken all of Joe's time, you can. <laughs> that's all right. We got a few more minutes here. I think we're only at uh, 48 minutes. So, um, so, yeah, my plan this year, I'm kind of going all out, uh, and it's a little. <laughs> Yeah, there's some last minute stuff that I'm planning right now, and hopefully it works. But it's, it's a little tougher for me, I think, because I've got a wife and kids, and I, they want me home with them. And I want to be home with them, but this is my opportunity to hunt turkeys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you only get so many months out of the year to spring turkey hunt. And this is, I like this more than deer hunting. Like, you might think that's weird, but I'd much rather turkey hunt their than deer own. Hunt. Yep. To each their own. Yeah. That's just my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have the second week. I got um, season B in Wisconsin for uh, through the drawing. Uh, so I'll be hunting here in Wisconsin. Uh, what is it? Uh, like mid April ish. Later, uh, maybe it's late April. I think it's late. Late April. Yeah, yeah. it might be the last week of April. I can't remember. Um, so I'll be just hunting local. Um, Oh, uh, before that, uh, what is it? This is mid-April, early and mid-April. I'm going down to Alabama on my very first out-of-state hunt ever. I'm going to hunt with my brother down there um, for three days. <laughs> I bought a three-day tag. And from what I understand, Alabama is pretty tough, so I don't know if three days is going to be enough, but we'll see. Maybe we'll get lucky. Um, either way, it's going to be nice to go down there with my brother. I don't think he's ever turkey hunted before. Um It'll be a new experience for both of us. See, he can't just do, like, a normal hunt. Like, it's got to be, we're going to go to Alabama, and then we're also going to take people who have never gone and then add that to it and everything else. I get his family, and I get why you're doing it, but it just makes me laugh sometimes because you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be new, but I'm going to make it twice as hard now, too. (laughs) Stacking up the challenges. Yeah, Yeah, because then what happens if we only see one? Do I let him shoot his first one, or do I shoot my first one in Alabama? Well, uh, I guess whoever we'll, saw it first, I say yeah. it's the shot. That sounds fair. I like that idea. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll did see he, how that so goes. So did he buy a three day one or is he planning on doing this after you leave too? So he's a or resident. Of, he's a resident of Alabama, so uh, Did he get a week long tag? You get a whole season as far as I understand. Really? They didn't oh. um for out of state um yeah, out of state tags, you can buy a three day I think it was like 140 bucks or something like that. You could buy a 10 day for 200 something, or you can buy a full season for a lot more than that. I can't remember. I think it was close to 500. I can't remember exactly. For a turkey. So the way it works in Alabama, um, you can buy a turkey license and you can shoot up to five toms. Oh. Um, or gobblers, as they call it, actually, <laughs> is the term that they use in their regulations, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, but you can shoot up to five, one a day for the spring and fall season combined. Okay, so, that doesn't sound so bad anymore. No. Yeah. Well, so what's that like? If it's like close, you said it's like close to 500? I think so, yeah, for the whole season. Well, no, for, for you get them on one tag. And you just, like, you have this form tag type thing. You have to just fill out, like, dates and that you, whatever that you, like, for each dates. bird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you get five. 
Yep, five birds, so, one a day for spring and fall combined. So it's like hundred bucks a bird then, <coughs> roughly. Roughly, if you were to you know price split it, out. it up, yep. Yeah, unless I'm just you do a ten day season and you get them all in ten days, which is not gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> this is Alabama we're talking about. I'm just hoping to see something in the three days that we're there. Yeah, because Alabama is like all you got all. It's almost all woods, from what so I understand. You, you technically on this license you have, you get you get five birds. Mm-hmm. For three days, technically. That's, that's what I have right now. So, so I can only shoot up to three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And how much is that? It's 140 bucks. I was 140, 150 bucks for the yeah. three day. So you're actually, I mean, that kind of makes sense for your price. You're getting the opportunity of more. Right. So. And I think there's people that are trying to change the bag limit and stuff. And there was just a recent change. I noticed something on Instagram. Uh, somebody posted something about it. So I'm going to have to go back in the regulations and make sure there were no yeah. changes. But um, Yeah, when you're hunting out of state, make sure this yep. is everybody, Make sure you have everything laid out because there's one thing you don't want to do is get kicked out of hunting in that state ever again. You know, you don't want to – you can't base it off here because every every regulation is, is different. So yep. Yeah, and I've, I've looked at what kind of shot you can use, like size and whether it can be light or not. Uh, I've looked at – uh, the WMA is I'm planning to hunt down there. You can only hunt till 1 p.m. Um, it's just goofy little rules like that that are different from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And Alabama's very, Alabama's very different from Wisconsin as far as their regulations go. Yeah, one thing I would suggest if you're hunting out of state, at least when, I, when I've hunted out of state, um, depending on where you're going, what state, talk to your, their local game warden, whether, you know, be a phone call, stop in at station, you know, talk to somebody that knows what's going on in that state mm-hmm. yeah. and who can help you out and answer any questions that you have. Mm-hmm. No, that's good advice because they know and they're happy to help you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've um, never seen a, a game warden turn down somebody trying to figure out the rules. So yeah, they're never like figure it out yourself. All right. <laughs> and if you don't, I'm giving you a citation. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, Alabama, Wisconsin, I'm trying to get Iowa to work for mid May. If they have any over-the-counter tags. I haven't done a whole lot of research yet on Iowa. This is kind of a last-minute thing. Um, but from what I've found, like I've been trying to... Um, so for Iowa, you have to provide them with your hunter safety certificate, which I don't have anymore because I got it when I was 12, and it's gone and destroyed by now. Uh, so I've been trying to get that to work. You have to like, add it to your documents on your profile, and it's been a hassle. Do they use like a Go Wild type Website, um, like so, Wisconsin So does? Go Wild is the website that Wisconsin uses, um, which there's also an app that isn't called Go Wild. It's called something else. For Wisconsin? It's Hunt Wild, I think. Oh. Hunt Wild, Wisconsin. I need to look that up because I don't have that. You might have to pay for it. I can't remember. But I'm not doing that. <laughs> but Iowa also has an app. It's not as inclusive as the Wisconsin okay. one. But um, uh, they have the website, and you can sign into it. And it's, it's a government website. They're all kind of goofy in their own way, and you they're sometimes hard to navigate. Um, I finally was able to figure out how to upload my documents to it. And I, I'm not super impressed. But I mean, it's the best. It's what they got. And you just got to work with it. Um, so still trying to get an over the counter tag for Iowa. And, and like, so they only have four seasons and their last season's multiple weeks long. And it's just one of those things you got to read up on regulations again. Um, so, Lastly, I'm looking at, well, I am hunting Minnesota. I already bought my tag. so. <laughs> See, I thought it was just Alabama. Well, like, that's what we initially, what he said initially. And all of a sudden, like, I come into work, and he's like, well, we're going to figure this out, and I'm going to do this. And I'm like, when are you going to do it? He's like, well, I got a three-day weekend. I'm going to just do it then. All, all right. right. So Joe's all about, like, crunching the week and trying to do it as short as possible. So It's not a healthy lifestyle. No. But <laughs> <laughs> it's... It works, I guess. Yeah. So I've got like these like random three day weekends that I'm just trying to cram everything into, and I'm gonna leave the night before, like after work, directly from work, and drive all the way out there, and it's gonna destroy me. He's gonna be grumpy when he comes back, (laughs) especially if he comes back with nothing, which is very likely. (laughs) I'm staying far away. Me too. Yes. Just remember, copious amounts of caffeine help. 
Yeah. yeah. If you well, I'm not going to go into caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Minnesota, it's going to be the last week in May. That's what we're looking at. So, and the cool thing about Minnesota is they don't have a limit on tags. So, like there's there is a drawing, but it's for specific WMAs. Um. I'm not sure how all that works, really. I, and that's, like, all early season, which I'm not going to do anyways. But um, uh, I'm hunting the last week, which is their season F, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's, like, two weeks long. Um, also, in Minnesota, if you buy an early season tag and you haven't shot your bird yet, you can also hunt Default the final season. Yep, which is kind of cool. That's nice. That's yeah. really nice. So, it's, so there's a lot of pe- there could be a lot of people in that season, then. There probably will be, and it's... I'm probably, that, and it's they draw, you said they draw, um, like your management zones or what? What do you yeah, mean by the that? WMA is a wildlife management area. Okay, so um, like your public land. It's a public slot. land. Yep. Okay. And does that go by like county or I how is that laid out? I think it's state regulated. And are they all numbered? Mm-hmm. All the zones are like different. So parcels yeah. Or what? So Minnesota's got different zones. Um. I don't really know how they divide it up. It's kind of like Wisconsin. You got like just sections oh, pieced okay. out. So um, they're not doing like parcel number one, two, five, seven, one or like weird. No, the WMAs are all named. Okay. But they're not like numbered or anything like that. Okay. Like you can only hunt this WMA type thing. There's okay. multiple WMAs within a zone. Okay. That makes sense. So, and Alabama is kind of the same way. Uh, most states from what I've seen are the same way. And they must do that to like make sure they know how many people they're giving like tags to in that specific part of that specific zone. Yeah, when you which apply is way for, different than what we do here. It's just the zones, right? Yeah, when you apply for your tag, you have to choose whichever zone you're going to hunt in. Okay. So there is that limiting factor. Um, well, that seems like an extra step. So they know exactly how many are in that zone. Yeah, and then you can only hunt that zone. Yeah. So... So you buy multiple tags, but mm-hmm. and that's just more money to the government. So yeah, <laughs> which you know that's for wrong this. With that. I'm okay with that. Yep. So it's not like taxes. Not sur- <laughs> yes, God, I don't like taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody does, yeah. except for the government. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, we're coming up to an hour now. Yeah, we're just probably wrap this up. I think we pretty much covered everything we wanted to today. All right, I'm gonna jump Joe again. Like him on Facebook here, Outdoor Realm, also Instagram. Yes. Tune into this podcast. We don't know when we're going to release it, like bi-weekly, weekly yet, but we're going to figure that out here soon. So yeah, this is this is only the third one we're recording, and we're still trying to th- figure things out yeah. here. So, but yeah, thanks for listening in, and uh, we'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Later. <laughs>